<laughs> no, I start every episode by saying, all right. So I'm not gonna change now. Oh my God, I'm sinking into this chair. All right, this is episode, dude, this is 16 already. Wow. Yeah, I know. I committed to two a week. I don't know why, but I just decided to do that. So, it's good uh, bite worthy. That's a phrase that I'm really trying to actually get uh, coined. Uh, this is gonna have a lot of foot traffic, but. Oh, th thank you, I appreciate it, thank you. No big deal. Um, it's where a comedian is good enough to want to steal their joke, but we don't do it because that's mean. And that's like one of the unwritten rules of comedy. Say bite-worthy, what is it again? Bite-worthy, bite yeah, worthy. because the channel is about food and comedy. Oh, okay. So biting material is like one of the things that is- No, you're is, fine, man. You're, you're, <laughs> you're good, good. you're good, I appreciate it. <laughs> It's gonna be a reoccurring We're thing. We're gonna on this force one. people to walk in the street. That's all. Yeah. 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 Use my short king attitude. <laughs> but this podcast but, has become a public safety issue. That's... <laughs> but we we are actually uh, here down in Sean's and Candler Park, a proud neighborhood, super proud neighborhood. It's it's really it's a really nice little pocket of Atlanta, and I'm here with uh, a bite worthy comedian. I've seen him a lot, and he is he's very funny. He's got. One of the best brains in comedy, uh, oh Tim Maggard, aka DJ Tim Maggard, even though you're not a DJ. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> ben likes to call me the DJ during his mic, and all I, I just pick a song and then I fade it, <laughs> I fade it up, and I fade it down. And sometimes I will do a d -d 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 up and down very quickly. <laughs> well, there, well, there's no scratching, there's no mixing. No ones and together. twos. No, it is just a volume control <laughs> thing. And occasionally, well, I pick a funny song. Well, Somebody loosely. Will reference. That, keep that train of thought yeah. on the tracks because that's a question. Sure. But I'm gonna get into this right here. Tall guy questions. Um, how's the weather up there? <laughs> uh huh. Uh, what's the tallest? No, li li literally, I want to ask you. What's the tallest thing you've high fived? Oh shit. Yeah, I often uh, if I'm in a, a, a building with high archways and I see you can like, get like it. Some fixture coming down. Like it's a very obviously tall ceiling. Like a I candelabra see, right, or something? Right, but I see something descending from the ceiling, then my brain does something where it's like, it's not all tall, maybe how high can I get? <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I've, uh, I guess the answer to your question though is uh, Liam Nelson. <laughs> I've given him a high five. In very short ceiling buildings. <laughs> he is, <laughs> like he is can... one feet six inches taller than me. And if he raised his hand, I'd have to climb him. Oh. Like, there's no way. I'm five foot five, so uh, I have jokes about the benefits and the problems of being short. What are the benefits of the problems of being tall? Like, I usually know, like, cl are clothes an issue? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got long, you just long person. 32 by 34 jeans are surprisingly popular, so that's a difficulty. And then, um, sorry, I'm getting a, a phone call in Atlanta. Oh, how professional. <laughs> Who's calling? Somebody's calling me in Atlanta that I don't. Anyway, I. Uh, <laughs> the, the benefit is, um, I guess, uh, women find it more attractive. That, uh, that they I think sure is, do. And then people they talk sure about do. like being able to reach high things. Honestly, like that gets to be a detriment. Like, like at work, I am often. You can reach the, the 16 foot high ceiling off a 10 foot ladder and nobody else can, and then I'm doing very unsafe things on a ladder. Yeah, you described that. Yeah, that's very frustrating. But then, uh, so, um, yeah, fitting into cars. So I used to work in a car wash for a few months, and yeah, just to be funny, they would give me, like, the, Prius. the smart cars. <laughs> oh, so, man. And then they would like, have me pull them out, and I would be, like, just driving out like this. Oh, my God. And um, I actually extended my leg. I don't know why I did that. It's actually, yeah. <laughs> but um, you can't extend your legs in there. Or I can't. But uh, I, I can go. Oh, sorry. I can go like this. I can just kind of yeah. fucking have at it. <laughs> yeah. I can do sw sw windmill swimmy, kicks. Swimmy feet. Yeah, yeah I can swimmy feet it because I am tiny. I. Uh, but the largest detriment was in jujitsu. So I think being tall, gravity is not in your favor. Uh, that there is a higher center of gravity, and then also if you fall down, specifically in jujitsu, as you as you fall, sometimes you will have a habit. You're not supposed to catch yourself an extended no, arm, no. But you just do, 
Yeah. It just happens. And it's like breaking uh, a long stick versus a short stick. <laughs> just physics is... That's part of my joke, is yeah. that tall people fall like trees, yeah. and they break limbs. Yeah. Me, I fall like a bowling ball, right. and I just kind of short to the ground here. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of how it is. That's exactly, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm much more you think prone, more? Do you think. think short guys like me would be able to get you in a, like an arm bar easier with that, with um, longer appendages? There are, I think, uh, guillotines are the big one. There's, I have a very long neck and short guys. Um, like when you have, like this area uh, is, is very large versus um, somebody with a, a shorter, it just creates sort of a smaller triangle here to, yeah. to suck up. So somebody with short arms who gets their arm around my head, uh, it's much easier for them versus me um, doing it to somebody with a shorter, thicker neck. Yeah, because uh, I rolled with a buddy who was an amateur MMA fighter and he's like, Dude, practice small. There's small man jujitsu, yeah, yeah. and it's a real, it's a real practice. They're good with butterfly guard and getting under. Small guys get underneath people very easily. Um, and yeah. I'm luckily I'm very spindly. By the way, the injury thing. People who are as tall as me but very muscular, they have much better like joint support in in the in the muscle. So I'm just a skinny guy. So that's you're tough. lean. You're very lean. But being skinny, also, I do fit into some some spaces better. Or I did. I can't do it anymore. My, I'd be shocked if you're over eight percent body fat. Um. I don't know. I never. I've never been measured. Uh, I, I had a scale. I think that yeah. told me, and I want to say it was around ten, and then sometimes lower. I can see ten, eleven. Yeah, eight, yeah. eight to eleven. That's that's where you said me. I'm. I am hovering at twenty-one. Yeah. To nineteen, but that's because I. I like. I eat places like this all the time. I, I dream of being obese someday. <laughs> it's well, it's not hard to do. This is America, bro. It's legit a struggle. Like I can't. Um, it's like I. Yeah, um, it's it, it's 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 tough because I used to actually have. Side note: I used to actually have a problem with gaining weight for the longest time, and I would have to force feed myself. And yeah, what I did, it's a chore. Was so difficult. I would eat normal, three meals a day, hefty portions, and try not to eat too unhealthy, but a lot of it. But I would have like a slim fast, and I would have like a like a yeah, yeah like a slim fast in between my meals. I've so you're adding shape, you're yeah. adding like four meals. I have a shake that has like 700 calories in it yeah. that, I, that I do. Okay. And you can put more scoops in there and get up to, there's another one with a similar serving size that has like 1,100, and I'm thinking about buying that That's one. That's a lot of calories. But yeah, I try to have that at every lunch, sometimes breakfast, like twice a day. I try to hit 4,500 calories. 45, I was about to say 5K. Here yeah, there. I Damn. used to, when I was a kid, I, would, I was doing five or 6,000, uh, but like running every day, doing soccer and whatnot, and jujitsu as well. But I can't, um, I don't know. It's, I, I'm bad with routine and like yeah. meal planning. And, and there's times at work where I'm just exhausted and I'm yeah. sitting in the car and uh, Comedy will. I just forget to eat. Yeah. My, it's like I'm just sitting there staring, scroll on my phone <laughs> for a little bit, stare. Why and, does my brain not work? Oh, I have no fuel. And then I look Great. at the clock and I have five minutes left on my break and I have uh, 1,500 calories left to consume. And it's, <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult. Well, I, uh, that that's a struggle we'll talk about off camera. I get that. Now, you are both a very silly comic yeah. and you're also a very serious matter comic that's called them. <laughs> it's called balance okay like and give me some things that provide balance or you have that balance each other out in life i'll give you an example like me i lift weights okay and that's very rugged and masculine very tough thing, yeah, yeah. you know, cleans, jerks, bench press, yeah. chalk, the whole thing. The masculine thing is resonating. That, that plays into it. <laughs> yeah. This, but keep... Yeah. And then what's your other side of it? Lavender baths. <laughs> I'm not okay. kidding. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's no, what I, I do. No, I love baths. I, we, we just, though, when I moved to Atlanta, we rented a house with two two bathrooms, and both of them have stand-up showers. There's no bathroom. Oh. And my, one of my roommates is a woman, and she was very... I picked the house out, and she, she had moved from out of state. Uh, and when she got to the house, she was like, there's no bathtub here. <laughs> like, she wasn't um, prepared for there to be a lack of tub. But I, uh, yeah, I, I, I was raised by my mother, and I'm, yeah. uh, I think I'm more effeminate than the average man, but there is something where, uh, that I realized about myself. I don't know if it's biological or what, but I do lean back into like being prideful about being masculine or having some provider energy which can be very difficult because um 
because my girlfriend's much more successful than me. So I don't. <laughs> so I am not. So she is providing for me a lot. I, you know what? I'm but, in. Uh, I'm, it's funny you say that because I'm in the same boat. My uh, my girlfriend out earns me by a large amount, yeah. and Liz like has got like forty thousand dollars on me. <laughs> I kind of. Not far behind you. That's man. like on. Actually, that's after I get my raise coming up. And right now, she's <laughs> like double. She's got. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's pretty rough. But yeah, I. With with the balance in life, there is yeah. I, uh, like like I'm like well, construction worker is rugged. That it's is about as thing. tough as you can that's be as a guy. Something I should be proud of. But I'm there and I don't relate. It's like yeah. I'm, I'm very uh, like I don't always jump in on the on the dirty jokes and stuff. And I fish I, out of water. A lot of people end up thinking I'm gay. <laughs> like there, it's like that culture that yeah. uh, it's very toxic masculine culture in construction yeah. work. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I I, I understand both yeah. those things. Like I, I've been. I mean, look at this shirt. I mean, look. Yeah, you've made comments. You're so self conscious in that shirt, and it's <laughs> not a bad shirt. It's complete. It's not even that pink. Like, I've seen much more. Like men yeah. will wear neon pink. And just be way Hot more confident pink. than you wearing oh, like a salmon colored shirt. Yeah, this, yeah, this is this is a nice you can play like that off. plum salmon. I, I appreciate that. This is for Connor, by the way. But I think yeah. as far as the balance goes in comedy, it's like yeah, I, I think some of it is a little bipolar disorder. <laughs> like I'm just <laughs> yeah. like confident and go getter and excited, and then uh, and then just very self hating and yeah, and, and so I will have something that for a long time I wanted to do like one man show dramatic stuff yeah. where you would you talk for two minutes before getting some big laughs and yeah well let me and, tell uh, you it, it it works well on stage it really does but it, but it I plays out well i just don't think it's a good build up from open mic kind of thing where you like you can't just keep showing it like how many times if you're rehearsing something and you're doing sh shows that are largely comedians and you just keep saying the same thing over and over you can do reps and like feel good about saying it out loud and and feel, but you're not going to to get your your laughter feedback because they're you're trying this dramatic topic and saying it over and over and people are just like yeah we get it you you were molested you know like you're <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. Nobody, like it, the, yeah the, yeah the, the magic it's is gone true. you know the, the, you you're know right. the magic of sexual abuse it's uh, <laughs> it fades very quickly the magic of sexual abuse but that's, so that's gonna be my that. first special I think yeah <laughs> but I'll have that and then I will be very down on myself about that and go you like you're not getting enough laughs you're being and then I will revert back into like yeah, you're, you're very cerebral. I, I mentioned that you're very like um, you're very like self-aware, introspective. You're very like uh, Sean Patton, one of my favorite comedians. He has a whole bit about intrusive thoughts. Oh yeah. He had a bit where he's like, I don't know if anybody can relate to me because you know I was standing with my dad and I just I kept just thinking like, touch his penis, touch his penis. He kept <laughs> saying stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's that's OCD. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I, "Does anybody else have this?" No, no, it's just me. Yeah. I'm sure people do. And it was, it was just went on about intrusive thoughts. And I was like, "Wow, I've never, I don't know what that's like." But I can say this outward, objectively, you make you make that funny. So Thanks, man. That may, that means a lot. Uh, in one of your jokes, yeah, I do. I I make Sean Patton's jokes very funny. <laughs> I, I steal them very well. Yeah, he's a he is definitely a biteworthy. His comic. jokes are biteworthy. Yeah, but very very. So you said he finally, I think he's the first person in 16 episodes that used the actual title of the show. We're keeping it crispy. Yeah, keeping it crispy. Shout, speaking, shout speaking out of, another, another podcast. <laughs> speaking of crispy, you, you mentioned in one of your jokes you have a chicken neck. Um, <laughs> I, what place... I had forgotten about that bit for a little bit. No, okay. that, that bit is funny. I go through material so quickly and constantly wanted to... Even stuff that no, I just did that, a month ago tell you, I forget about. If, <laughs> if you're on the fence of keeping it or getting rid of it, please keep it. It's, it's funny. Yeah. So... Speaking of crispy and chicken, yeah. what place or who yeah, yeah. makes the best chicken that you've met? Or have you been in Atlanta? Anything um, like that? My Person, roommate, whatever. When my roommate moved in with me, he, he, I cooked a lot more than him, and he sort of watched me cook. And I would be like, and I think he was sort of intimidated by ingredients and things. And I'm not even a very good cook, but I just am not afraid to throw things in a pan and, and just uh, and look up recipes or whatever okay. and, and fuck around. And I think he uh, overtook me very quickly in, because I will, I'll make a bunch of stuff, but I overcook things and I, uh, whatever, just over season a lot. Um, yeah. And then he, uh, my roommate Pat, he makes chicken very well now. Better than me. Pat's also, chicken, huh? But also uh, Raising Cane's. 
I can't. Never had it. During I haven't the pandemic, yet. I ate it like four days a week. No uh, shit. I lived across the street from one in Tucson. Where? Oh, in Tucson. Yeah, okay, because yeah. I, I. There's uh, one in Athens. That, yeah. yeah, that's that's where April said because I I want to go. That's one of the chicken places. She mentioned a place called Chicken Express that used to be there, yeah, but yeah. it's no longer. And it was in like Athens or Watkinsville, and she's like, that was one of the best places. They're only in Texas now, ah. and she said Raisin Cane's is pretty good. That cane sauce, he, she's like, yeah, you yeah. better get it. It's it's kind of just a Thousand Island. It's pretty generic. It's a, it's just very simple food. It's very easy. Like there's not much variation. Every time you get it, the, the all best. the chicken pieces are about the same size, same temperature. That none of them have like any gristly pieces. But if you want, to, honestly, I think most of the, it just becomes pattern stuff in your head, I think. I think most of the chicken places, your uh, Chicken Max, uh, Popeyes, Chick-fil-A, um, they all may prepare in little, di like their nuggets may be different or something, but in general, they're all pretty damn good. You churches, can't, churches, I mean, you can't really mess, good. I mean, a piece of fried chicken is like yeah. one of the best foods. Slim, I, Slim Chickens, that's another one that's really good. Really? Yeah. I have never heard that one. Uh, there's a comedian that was like, uh, the racial stereotype of fried chicken is a weird thing to make fun of people for because, oh, yeah. like, everybody loves it. Yeah, yeah. Like, everybody. It's a weird thing. I don't know. So, yes, yeah, okay. With, yeah, I Pats. agree. Pats. I'm going to, Pats and Raising Canes. Now, I love how quickly you're like, you know what, this topic actually, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to talk about racial stereotypes we, so much. We, yeah, uh, we dodged it pretty, fairly well. Um, follow up question though which comic has the best neck? In, in Atlanta? Aside from me? Aside from you. Yeah. You're number one. Yeah, yeah. It's like, who's your favorite person in the Bible that's like, Jesus? Well, yeah, duh, Jesus, but... There's a comedian, I can't remember, his Instagram name is A.O. Ferg. I cannot remember... Dexter I, I Ferguson. He, okay, there you go. I, he That dude's hot as fuck. <laughs> and he's got a good, like, neck uh, into shoulder ratio. Hell yeah. Uh, muscle tone. I he like, does yeah. Spartan races. Really? Yeah, he has yeah, a yeah. bit about uh, being, he was the only black dude in a Spartan race and it made him feel like a runaway slave. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he's funny, dude. So funny. He had, dude. he had a, he has a bunch of good, he, he is a bite worthy comic. Speaking of, uh, very funny. Other, I, Dom Smith also has a very nice neck, and yesterday I heard him say for the first time at a mic yesterday, he, he was talking about something about sperm and sperm count, and I can't remember, and he said, he said, it's unfortunate because because uh, I'm black, so half of my sperm can't swim. Can't swim. <laughs> it's like, I, and then you're like, I, it's a, I have to laugh at it. Yeah, he was my last episode. We actually filmed before we did that yeah. mic, and I was telling him like, He's so, he's such a nice guy. When he goes hard like that, it hits so much harder. And I like that about someone. If I were to say something really, uh, to quote Joe Smith, if I were to say some wild shit, I, it, it would hit harder for me because I don't really do that. You know? Yeah, I don't, I, I stay away from, I used, when I started comedy, I was like really edgy and gross and honestly said a lot of uh, awful racist and misogynistic things. <laughs> I was also, I, this is an explanation, not an excuse, but I was also a horrible alcoholic. But, um, right. But, uh, I, I remember hanging out with, <laughs> with, uh, there was a group of black comedians, um, around the time when I started, and I, we would go perform at basically clubs and bars that they would book. Yeah. So, and, uh, and I, and people would tell me, you're being racist right now. And I would say, no, I'm not. Which, looking back, worse, like, if someone tells you, you know, like, <laughs> you should just take their word for it. You know, you shouldn't, like, hey, buddy, you shouldn't you, try to you talk. Hey, buddy, you stepped in shit. Like, like no, that, I didn't. That's not shit. Yeah. <laughs> you smell bad. No, I don't. And like, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm going to believe you. So, yeah, yeah so now I, I mostly just... Um, occasionally, there will be some observation or something in a room, and you just say something. But in, in, as far as writing material, my brain doesn't even go there anymore. I don't think I, don't think I have... Um, I just don't think it's my place to say. It, it doesn't interest me to contribute to that conversation uh, I, I there, hear. there's nothing funny for me to say about i that hear stuff. that because uh, I, I mean i i try and be i i feel like i'm a little bit more like a 1992 comic you yeah. know like a like not a netflix special comic but an hbo special comic okay. you know sure. that's kind of how i feel and i don't there's not a lot of that unless you were like a def jam comic which i am not and so i i sure. I, I go for silly wordplay and and things race is like I, or like hot one it just it's I not think other my people make it very funny but they it, can but I mean, it doesn't you sure seem like, can it doesn't seem like my territory yeah no i mean i have a couple i have a list of <laughs> i have a list in my joke book called black jokes 
I do and have old jokes that I used to tell that I know, like, will hit, but I don't think that they're uh, very world building. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. That's that's a wise. I thing. think people think they're funny, but I think when I, upon reflection, I still, I think, the <laughs> somebody who's smart and very sensitive to it would still be like, yeah, but who is at the expense? Who, who is suffering in that show? Yeah. It may be a, a funny observation, or so, it, but it, I, and I, I think one of the things this is a conventional wisdom thing that a lot of people talk about. If you're going to do that, then you should probably have material for everybody, and most of it should be against yourself. Dude. So, so you should be hitting a lot of groups. And so, if I just have like, oh, this group or that, group, and it just is the only one in the in the set, that feels very. I, uh, I don't want to single God. out any group. You hit the nail on the head because I wrote, I rewrote a Except joke. Except for paraplegics. Fuck them. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> That's why it's stand-up comedy. Huh. Um, well, yeah, I, I rewrote a joke that was only at the expense, because it was in relation to Dom said a joke, and it was at the expense of only black culture and black people. And then I was like, wait, I can make fun of everybody. And then now I'm just like divvying it out equally. Yeah. Equal, like poking fun offensiveness and that's a lot it's like oh I see what you're doing Balance. there yeah it's very good and then I made the, the premise is like oh I'm the asshole yeah that's when you're like oh I see what you did there that works a lot better yeah yeah, yeah. so you let me see having a handyman construction background let me ask just a couple I'm trying to be handy a little bit regardless of this shirt um, yeah speed square best friend or is it for rookies uh, I love speed square I, me too uh, I, I do I mean, there's very few people who are like eyeballing a straight line. So I mean, yeah, you, you'd be shocked when you're when you're cutting. Yeah, I mean, I were some and, good and old it, boys. And if you're, I mean, if you if you have a straight edge, you can take a marker and eyeball um, uh, an inch and sort of keep your hand, and that that'll be a straight line. I mean, there are tricks you can do, and and you could snap lines with a chalk box. You could use a laser. There's other. You don't have to use. You don't have to even use a, a scratch or a mark. But yeah, when when you're when we're cutting ducts, uh, you uh, it, it's very nice. Uh, or if you have like two inch wide hanger strap, and it's kind of important to put a snip on either side and make them level so that no, your yeah. what your duct is sitting on isn't isn't uh, <laughs> crooked. Um, then yeah, it's nice to throw a speed square on there and draw it all. I like just the speed make square. one mark. That's then, what I was, and then finish the mark. Thank you. I like I like it. Some people are like, I don't use it. That's for rookies. That's what that's what one guy said. That's why the question came up. But so our impact drills it, yeah. pointless. Our impact drills pointless? No. <laughs> Who is saying these things? <laughs> some, <laughs> some some people say impact drills some, are pointless. Some handyman that I did not hire. I think that's all comes from that. I don't know. I th I think. Uh, for the job I do, I'm putting like uh, machine screws, sheet metal screws into sheet metal all the time. And an impact drill is just very quick. It's not that you couldn't use like a regular three-speed drill motor. Right. But like, what, what does it matter? And, impact drill, get shit done. And they're and usually impact, smaller. Yeah. And it's stylish. It makes a nice noise. <laughs> it's very oh, satisfying. Oh, that's good. That's yeah, a good yeah. one. Yep. That should be my alarm clock. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a construction ASMR. So check out uh, Dewalt's uh, uh, brushless. Never mind. <laughs> this to, this episode is sponsored by words really Milwaukee. Yeah. <laughs> Most underrated construction tool. I usually go for for Dewalt over Milwaukee, but I did watch a video recently where a Dewalt drill kicked the shit out of a Milwaukee, or uh, excuse me, vice versa, a Milwaukee drill. They like Milwaukee tied them stuff, together, uh, like two drills, and then, da -da 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 -da. And, then and then pulled the. Uh, they put zip ties on the triggers and oh, really? put uh, like a long bit in between both of them so that they were connected, and then and then uh, basically just uh, zip tied both of the uh, the triggers down. Like drill and then war. Let them like fight, yeah. And the Milwaukee, uh, yeah, kicked the shit out. It just like whipped the fuck. And <laughs> the battery came off of the Dewalt, and it, uh, yeah, they were. It seemed to have a lot more power. The has got a lot of torque, man. Those powers don't those those don't mess around. I also think it just depends on how old the drill is, uh, how what what battery you got on it. Yeah, what model the drill is. So it, it's hard to say. I don't know all the specs of both the drills. Yeah, I mean, you get a 48 volt battery, something massive. You just like yeah. it just goes yeah, nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, let me ask you the most underrated uh, underrated construction tool. God, I hate construction work. So I'm like, so I'm like, are they, I know, so, but so I'm kind of like, they all suck. I fucking hate. I don't think we need any more <laughs> buildings. I think, we, I think, fucking take all those strip malls and put hospitals inside of those. I'm tired of, yeah. Uh, let's see. That's world building. underrated. 
okay, I I don't see very many sheet metal workers carrying around speed squares, uh, and a lot of them will eyeball stuff and just like don't need to. But I, I do think it's useful to have around, and nobody really talks shit on it. But I think <clears throat> I think a good man. I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of people who don't want to carry a ratchet set around or a set of wrenches. And because is good. they say if I have a set of ice grips, I don't need, if you have two, two pairs of ice grips, you'll never need uh, a ratchet or a, but it's just like, there are different, yeah, speed wrenches, uh, ratchets, but also nobody says those things are under, are, are like not well rated. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I mean, oh man, um, I haven't seen a lot of people in use a chalk box here in Atlanta. It does, there are different labor cultures. I've worked in Wichita, Tucson, and Atlanta now, and across the different, here uh, most people use tool aprons versus I, I have like the big pouches that are on either side. I like the Those pouches. are a little more heavy, yeah. uh, and, and they're bulky when you're climbing up in tight spaces. So, yeah. And but they got magnets people. and stuff on them for like loose yeah. stuff. That like those are those are the best. None of the none of the I, I never saw anyone putting their tools in backpacks in Wichita. Nobody. But now I'm like, dude, that's the shit. You don't like versus having having your pouches and then having a bag and then as whatever task you're doing, you put whatever tools you need out yeah. of the bag into the pouch and carry them around. Yeah. But the backpack is like um, that shit. Yeah, you put it on your back. Sometimes it's too heavy to sling up over your shoulder. It, a lot of people but, put way too much shit in there for yeah. it to actually be a backpack. But it is convenient. I mean, it's there, you know, you're just everything's free. I'm Especially, gonna say I'm, my... I'm still in class, so it's like you could... Right. But you're not, probably not gonna put your books and tablet in with all of your heavy tools, but, but still, drills uh, you could on different days. Drill bits, yeah, I gotcha. It's good to I, have different, yeah. I think mine is the uh, the mini sledge, the five pound. My, my grandpa calls it an adjustment tool. And that, I mean, because if you're doing construction work, like if you have to knock out <laughs> this, this stuff, podcast, is really <laughs> I know. Okay, keep but going. But here's the thing: it's this is we we're more than comedy. Sure, we're yeah. We're men. Yeah. We have trades and we have jobs in life, but that's just mine. That's just I want to throw out there. I still appreciate it. I just imagine a lot of people xing out right now. But <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's a lot of you know what? Clicking that, on the next Joe Rogan clip. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how that goes. But we we played uh, we both played chess quite a bit. Let me just throw some chess. I do want to. Okay, as far as I'm sorry, the sledge. Yeah, yeah. So the sledge. A lot of people. So everybody in Wichita and a lot of people in Tucson specifically had sheet metal hammers. They're called setting hammers. When I yeah. moved here, and a lot of people had different types of hammers, and they talk shit on. I would I would have this like really nice sixty dollar Malco hammer, and they go, "Does that make you a better sheet metal worker?" And they talk all this shit. <laughs> and I'm I think. And so that has now here in Atlanta, I think the the specific sheet metal hammer, the setting hammer, is overrated in the sheet metal trade, oddly. And people will will use oh. uh, whatever, like claw hammers and different. Usually not with a round head, but different, no. differently shaped hammers. And I still think um, the sheet metal hammer is is sick, and the the point on the edge is very good for uh, specific situations. More if you're working in the shop than in the field, but still, um, I think the sheet metal hammer is is underrated here in Atlanta. <laughs> that's a wise, that, yeah, that, that's that's wise. Cause you deal more, I deal more with wood, you deal more with steel. So I'm more residential handyman, your, your handyman stuff. Right, right. Yeah, I used to be a maintenance guy. I would, I would replace some, there would be, I worked in a, yeah. there were kids who would, it was a, kids who were custody of the state. It was a like a boys home yeah. with also, there were girls there, but they call them boys ranches or whatever. That's yeah, what yeah. people think of them as but kids like kicking doors out and so I'd have to replace door jams and door frames. A lot of trim work drywall. there. Drywall. <laughs> yeah. So there was some carpentry in my past, but yeah, I'm much better. Oddly, that, uh, kid say. fist size shaped holes in sheetrock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and windows. I would replace a lot of windows. Oh yeah, that makes, that that, that checks out. Yeah. Anyway, that checks chess, out. so you're on chess Chess, now. yeah, yeah, because we have, we have we're, we're multifaceted people. I try and have a lot of dimensions. So we both played chess quite a bit, throwing some chessy stuff out there. You're good, you're good. Yeah. I usually, oh, you're good, it's okay. That's no, okay. We appreciate it. Uh, I usually open French defense. Okay. That's yeah. usually how I open. Okay. Um, I think it's one of the most kind of normal. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty defensible, I think. So you know the vocab. A little bit. I, I mean, know I know some... a little bit. Okay. I, oh man. All right. If I, 
What do you? What's your typical open? Okay, I, I can tell you the pieces. I don't. I know what a fianchetto is. Okay. I know what the queen's gambit looks like. Yeah. Uh, there is there's a specific defense where you go um, you go uh, king's pawn and then not the queen's pawn but the next one over. That one goes up two spaces. And I can't remember what that's called, but I'll do that one a lot. That one has been a regular for me lately. Okay. But generally, I like to go. I used to go queen's pawn. Uh, queen side, uh, queen spawn, queen side, and also if they're gonna attack, then this doesn't go, like if they're gonna be very aggressive, then this won't. But if it's sort of like letting each other open and not threatening specific shapes, right? I go, uh, I would often go queen side pawn uh, up to. Oh, I, I can't even, I can't. People can like do grid, do the. I can't even speak. I've been playing for like. I don't know, 10 years, and I can't, I don't even, Yeah, people I can't are like, say, like D2. Well, I go, uh, yeah, I go uh, E2, E, you know, yeah. D1, they, they just, they just rattle I can't, off. I can't, and I've tried to study and read the, and it's just mind numbing. Yeah. I play very intuitively, which means I suck, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that, but. People, people, you'll always lose to somebody who actually does their homework. So you so, do, you do other I, than I, a I French do uh, queen side, yeah, queen side pawn. Then uh, queen side uh, knight, and then the uh, and then the queen side uh, bishop, so that you isolate the. You, you try to create a fork. The next move, if they don't do anything, you're going up with the knight, and then the, the one after that, you will be try, yeah. trying to fork their queen and and uh, and rook. Because if I, and you I can sort of branch out from there. Because if you can isolate one move yeah. where they have to do it, you're ahead. You become you become ahead yeah, in, yeah. in in terms of offense, which is an awesome thing in chess. I, I love I love chess. It's so fun. I don't get to play it because nobody plays it around me. None, none, none of my friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, I play online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, I, I but I, I like Michael Wurst something... plays. If you want to play with him, he plays a little bit. Where uh, he's I a don't, comedian here. I don't, I don't know him. I've met him. Michael Wurst. He's a uh... anyway. But yeah. I used to do a lot of the queen side, now I do the king side with the same shape. But yeah, that, I, that goes to my next question. Yeah, so yeah. I try in almost every game, I try to castle. Yeah, yeah. Is absolutely. that is castling an underutilized one or is it No, they say castle early. Cast castle as quickly as you can. But the thing I've been told uh, by somebody who's much better than me, I, I often like this is why I do king or queen side now excuse me, king side for that shape that I just talked about more mm -hmm. often than, because what I was doing was basically trying to empty out the queen side and then get the queen out and castle queen side. But that leaves an extra space on the right side and it's very easy for them to isolate uh, that far Yeah, because you're, you're then, vulnerable on that rook so side. So people yeah. who are really good will, will fuck up that shape really easily. But I still like to do it because um, in my range of play, you can, it's, it's not too dangerous. I'm not like yeah. playing grandmasters or anything. But yeah, you cast castle quickly and usually castle kingside, I guess, if you, if you have, uh, but if they castle kingside, then you probably want to castle queenside so that you have the diagonal attacks, but then you're, but you're also offering them up just as many attack options. Because I mean, so you yeah. shift the whole board when you, especially late game, if you, a yeah. late game castle. You're good to go. Don't you're worry good. It. Yeah, it's, it's fine. We're, that's it's not, not that important. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, it, it, I'm going to hate old players. <laughs> 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 we uh, so disrespectful. <laughs> we so we if you you change the landscape, especially a late game castle, and it's like because that rook, man, I, I that, you need to get the rooks together. It's very important. Yeah, that that leads me. To, they defend themselves that, best. That leads me there, to my next you, you question. Can't, or a queen. You at least have to keep a queen with a rook, but it's very hard to keep the rook defended with any other piece. It's uh, you're you're right. So the rarest move is an under promotion to a bishop, right? Yeah. If there is no queen option for promotion, what do you pick? If I'm not going to promote to a queen? I, I can't think of a single Hot time. Hot chest take. I can't, yeah, I can't think of a single time I've promoted to anything other than a queen. Of course. But I have done uh, tactics where they're like, oh, trick question, you were supposed to do a knight, like, uh, <laughs> to like, and then you would, like, if you're promoting a pawn, you're, you're probably going to win, or, well, that's not always the case. Sometimes you're, you're at the end, and two, both people promote and whatever. But, um, but yeah, there are cases where instead of winning in four or five moves, you could win now if you promote it to. But um, I like knights. Knights are cool, but I, I uh, but but they only have because they can jump over things. But um, but the range is short, and if you're it's across limited. the board, then you might need three moves to get 
to where it's effective. Yeah, where is a rook? I mean, a I, I would go rook. Yeah. Because yeah, I, yeah. I would pick rook. I, I almost I like picked rook, knight. Rooks more than, yeah. Well, rooks are inherently in the point system more valuable than bishops, but I... Uh, but when, when you actually, and if you're in a position where you're be, you're promoting, it's, it's not early on, and yeah, it's yeah. late, and there's room... Yeah, yeah to run. Rook is know. definitely gonna, yeah, if you promote to bishop and you're, then you're stuck on that square. I mean, and then right. the person can always avoid your dark square bishop. So ball. rook, yeah, 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 yeah. So if you go rook, you're in two moves on a different play. Yeah. So I, that, that's just It can also play its its own, you know, it, it, there's just, it's it's so, so interesting good. because you can break rules. You can break conventional wisdoms and, but there are. Much uh, like comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't wear shorts on stage. Fuck you. I'm gonna, you know. Like, <laughs> I will wear you, only shorts. You can always do whatever. I will be the shorts comic if yeah. you tell me. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't, don't tell me to do that. Yeah, it's so weird to tell, yeah, like, they're like, move the mic stand. And then you're, you're telling somebody who, like, wanted to try stand up comedy who, clearly, if you wanna try, then you probably have some, like, issue with authority or some, some, like, extreme personality trait <laughs> in, in you that has made you try comedy or uh, and then so if you're not moving the mic stand and somebody tells you you're probably you probably don't give a shit for a while like why would you look there's a lizard on this umbrella oh shit crazy that's wild yeah because i i think uh, comedy is a lot of punk rock stand. yeah fuck you what are you gonna do about it but I've, uh, i always move the mic stand yeah <laughs> i do too i was taught that in comedy class yeah so yeah. um give me tim magger dj recommendation of these intro songs for each of these comedians okay great yeah liam harvey this is more difficult than i expected um <laughs> liam what would you harvey, play uh Li liam harvey oh man i don't even know what kind of music liam likes but uh i <laughs> also i don't often curate for the person unless no unless i talk to them beforehand and ask them if they want to if we're just friends and i go do you want a song do you want to particular song i can tell you what i play for liz well, that, that's about but okay liam i would i want to say something insulting but i can't think of any song like, <laughs> like the barney theme song I don't know. <laughs> like uh oh man liam i would say something yeah that makes you want to kill yourself because he's often <laughs> like dark yeah something really radiohead yeah yeah <laughs> that's kind of where my head was at good nick murphy nick oh man Nick Murphy seems uh, hyphy. I, I'd say Nick would. I would see him walking on well to a Ti song. <laughs> <laughs> just out of spite. I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> I just see him like. Yeah. Yeah. That I makes, think that checks out. Or some top forty kind of, uh, or a uh, '90s alt rock thing. Yeah, him walking onto Gin Blossoms. I could see that. <laughs> the Gin Bl. Yeah. yeah. Seven Mary Three. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. uh, Ty Colgate. Ty Colgate, uh, um, uh, front bottoms, something, something by the front bottoms. Or, okay, or wow. Or I, I, I would have picked. He's he's a big punk rock kid. I, really? I'd play. I, I see him as yeah, some just sort of as an insult closet and indie guy. yeah, yeah. You know what? As an insult, this is a two for one because he loves punk rock and it's kind of an insult. I would play the Queers. Okay. Yeah, I'd play the Queers. Okay. Um, Keith Vance. Keith Vance. Uh, I would play like some some fucking deathcore Viljarta, <laughs> Viljarta, some Genti, something that does yeah. Because anytime, dude, Gojira. When, a, when a black comedian goes on stage and I and I play a, a rap or hip hop song, they they call it out and they go, yeah, okay, because I'm black, you gotta play the. <laughs> so often, so I'll often just try to play something completely that would not. Cephalic carnage, some yeah, shit like yeah, that. Some, some fucked up. <laughs> yeah. All right, Liz. Let, what do you play for Liz? Liz, I play, uh, um, uh, it's, uh, god damn, what's it, I think it's, it's oh, it's just called Dope. Uh, dope? It's just called Dope, I can't remember who the artist is, but, uh, she likes these, like, girl vocalist, uh, super dancey, hard bass songs, so, uh, so that when like she goes Like peaches up, and shit? Yeah, or, gotcha. uh, um, but there's, like, there's this song Dope, there's Elastic by Joey Perp or whatever that guy's name is. There's uh, there's another one, uh, Train by, yeah, what is that? But yeah, they're just- Such a single word titles that she likes. They're very heavy. <laughs> I wish I could I could recall 
you know, I can picture like the album art and I right. can, and see where it is on the playlists in my Spotify, but I cannot remember the, the artists or or any of the other artists' songs. I gotcha. What would you play for old Benny? Ben Benjamin. Uh Deftones uh um uh, uh the god damn it. Shove it. Shove it, shove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah or the or the what is it? The, the one that starts it You're just good. carry on. I think it's two toms or a tom and then a snare it goes do 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 that one. I would play that one. Whatever that is. Or passenger or something. Yeah, he likes death tones a lot. Or I'd play corn and say something on on the mic to make fun of him and say he looks like he wants to start a corn cover band. <laughs> yeah. He does he owns he, a seven string guitar. So <laughs> Does he? <Yeah. laughs> you, you, we talked earlier about like people surprising you. Yeah. That that shocked me. Yeah. That fucking shocked me. Okay. Uh, last, what would you play for me? Um, the song Devo. Devo. Whip <laughs> yeah. it. Whip it. Yeah. Whip the song it. that's on right now. Because I'm Candler old. Because I'm I'm 36 um, and I don't realize. I bet you like Pearl Jam. I, I I dig some Pearl Jam. My my favorite. I have 19 Johnny Cash records. Okay. Yeah, I could see that for you. I'm as a John. Well. I'm a I'm a J. He is the I in I will fight someone if they. Well, I wouldn't fight him, but I, my music taste person inside of me wants to fight people when they say he's not the greatest American songwriter. I'm like, there's no possible way. He wrote a song called 25 Minutes to Go, and the whole song is each minute about this guy that's on death row. Oh, it's man. the best. He's the that's best. That's really cool. Yeah, he's the I best, I think there's man. too many, there's too many geniuses. There's too many, I mean, like, I, I've heard people... I know this guy who says Tool is the greatest band of all time. And that I, guy is a Tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think there's some really cool stuff about Tool, but I just, but yeah. I, I, anytime I hear anyone say this is the best anything, I, like, I don't do favorites very well. People are like, what's your, what's your favorite food? What's, who's your favorite comedian? I can't, like, it's so difficult. It's the me. worst podcast because for there, you then. <laughs> it's there's the worst show. There's just so on. many. Yeah. There I mean, are. Like, you need not wrong. Freddie Mercury was an incredible songwriter. Um, True. And there's just tons and tons of like songwriters who are in, in bands who will experience much smaller success who are never, the, the singer from Talking Heads with John or David, whatever the fuck his name is. John, David, Joe, whatever that guy's name <laughs> Yeah. Was. Uh, that guy was amazing. Tom, yeah, Tom York is something else. Uh, right, yeah, Johnny Cash is obviously, but he's but one I hear of, what you say, and now he's I get defensive. <laughs> he's one of he's 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 my in terms of American folk, country singer, songwriter, blues guys. That's up there. If you're talking about like, there's there are some some of my favorite albums nobody has ever heard of. Yeah, there's and uh, they're incredible, and, and, and they're like spent, I can over and over somebody again. Somebody spent a decade working on it, and they never achieved commercial success. Yeah, but they, you know, they, but they got they got five hundred thousand plays on Spotify. They're a little cult classic. Yeah, thing. they but, they they be, they realize like, oh man, this this stands, this stands out. I even I'll hear metal bands, and it's just like this is, and there's stuff I like. Oh, you like death metal? I bet you never listened to this thing that came out in 1998 that paved the way for the whole thing and like I, I don't do but there's other like Viljarta is this incredible fucking band with just like I've seen you listen to that on and it's just on and this shit blows my mind and I don't think they will ever be like a household name in, in metal like there but are in your house w with people who are they will be. far less interesting or talented in my opinion uh, who have commercial success and would be highly regarded as you know great songwriters and great metal composers but that's, like, that's yeah, the but beautiful what about those guys you yeah know? that's so the, that kind of thing you, yeah you know what i like that that's the beautiful thing about both music and comedy is that like you are somebody's taste yeah yeah and let me tell you i i have it's hard to remember sometimes <laughs> yeah I, i'm not I see I'm other not people many. yeah i'm not many people's but there's a couple times where i have like uh, someone's like i'm a fan of i i i like we talked, I talked to Ben, and he's like, "Dude, I, I think you're really funny." And that the for that I think that was the first time I really heard that. Like, and I was like, "Wow, it was yeah. a big deal." It's like, "Oh man," yeah, yeah. and someone really meaning it, you know? Because there's a lot of things yes people men. have said to me were, uh, "Don't ever quit," and I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god." But now when I want to, and I'm like, this is, I don't think I like doing this anymore, or whatever those moments, <laughs> I just think, like my brother, my brother passed away, and he, 
Uh, I remember talking dogs. to him about quitting, and he 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 built my website. I don't have it anymore. I mm -hmm. lost the domain name, uh, but uh, he made my website for me, and after, and he put all this effort into supporting me and helping me do comedy and do all this advertising stuff we did. Um, these tattoos are sort of a memory of some show advertising we did uh, before he passed away. But he, I remember talking to him about quitting, and he said, "If you quit, I'll be so mad." And now, now he's dead, and I feel. And I've talked to some people about that, and they're like, if you need to, don't, like, he's, don't, like, you don't, that's toxic, man, don't, he's, he's gone, <laughs> man, if you need to quit, you can quit, don't, because there are times where it's like, this seems bad for my mental health, <laughs> yeah, keep I, doing this. But, I, uh, I question, I question it, most, most times I have a bad joke, and most times I, when I see crazy shit and comedy off the stage with people, I'm like, oh, yeah. Mm. This is this is uh, maybe maybe I'm not oh, for this because I'm a, just a uh, little yeah. guy with a lady in a in a in a lake house and like yeah. we're we're just living our little life with dogs and but people sometimes... out here want to fucking mean something and, and they want to they yeah and they, they want to call you out they want to gossip they want to yeah some some people not it's kind of in everything honestly at work there's true. a lot of gossip but 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 in in entertainment specifically and I think it's a big I have a problem with this which I never thought I would have but people see other people succeed. Or people, or whatever, and it, it's very hard to not um, turn that back on your own failure. This day that we're that people will see this. So right. anything that you have, I uh, think Alex Scheller, he has a house show that he produces, uh, and I can't remember the address or what. The, but Alex Scheller, you can search. Him oh, online. this house showcase, I think it what it is. Yeah, something. Yeah, in, and he. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm doing that with a bunch of people this, okay. this coming Friday or Saturday. I can't nice. remember. So there's that, and then also uh, we've been doing a little podcast at Dynamic. We, we're really we're not putting it out very. We're just streaming it on Facebook on the Dynamic El Dorado page. Oh, okay. And, uh, but it's fun, and I, I'm going to try to talk about mostly Atlanta comedy gossip and sh and new shows and things and my opinions. The hats. On, I want to talk about how I think Smith's Bar and Grill is it a, is it a grill? A, oh, Smith's Old Bar. That's what it called. I I think Smith's Old Bar smells like one giant fart. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I think it's really cool that they always have an audience, but I don't think it's cool that, um, yeah, that it smells like a fart. Uh, <laughs> it's the it's the sweetest like jab at anything. That's yeah, innocent. That's good stuff. So I, I want to say stuff like that. On my healthy podcast. competition. Just call out stupid. Uh, healthy farting stupid competition. Stupid small farty uh, places. Small complaints. You're good to go. You can. Yeah, yeah. you're good. You're fine. Yeah, you're you're, you're, no you're good. Um, By the way, everybody's been so polite. Just mundane observations about comedy in Atlanta and and my life and venting and. Let me tell you, I like your I everything. like your take on it because you have you have this like insightful curmudgeon about it. I Thanks, like it, man. Yeah, I. Uh, it's good. I hate you too. Fuck you. Yeah. You said you said <laughs> fuck you when you saw me yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's because I like you, and you know? it's because I I think we've actually known each other a little while now. And we've had a little conversation, and when you cross over the "Hey man, good set" fist bumps, that's when things. That's when I like, and that it's like one of the biggest signs of becoming a friend of a comedian or just a friend who's a comic is when like you stop messaging them, and then you get their phone number, hmm. and then you're like, "Oh, text me, text me about bullshit." I don't get people's phone numbers a lot anymore, which is I think that's a. I don't think it's that people wouldn't give them to me or that I don't, wouldn't, but I, I think I, I don't know if it's a confidence issue. I'll do social media a lot, but I, yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm just not a very, I'll give you my number, but I'm yeah, not yeah. a very personable, I, it's a thing that I'm jealous about with Liz. She, she is very extroverted and social. I think I've become more, I think during the pandemic, I really, I was like, I, yeah. need, I need people. I have to go out. I can't be, but I, but when I go out, I do not. I'm I an opposite. Much. I can't. I, I'm an extroverted person and I wish I was more introverted. Oh. I like, I'm, I will make friends with anybody. I but wish I, I, I felt more comfortable to, 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 to listen to people and to exchange and connect, but it, really? it, it takes me a long time. I have um, a very small inner circle of uh, friends yeah. and family. Yeah. Which my family isn't even really in my inner circle very often, but some they like, come in and out. Same. But and then I just have a lot of acquaintances, and uh, it's tough for me to to connect. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know what? I, that's that's fine. Well, I'll, I'll I'm a I'm a I'll buddy. Get your number. I got you. I got you. So that's it. Uh, follow yeah. Tim. He's going to be a lot of places. I just want to keep saying more. I love <laughs> every time. I'm like, no, I'm going to make this longer. Yeah, there's this thing. Well, and good I, luck. Jeremy made it uh, 53 minutes. Well, how long is this so far? 
Fuck off. You, fuck if I know. You didn't time it on here? It's okay. uh, at least at least 40. Cool. Yeah, so we've been we've that's been a here good length. a hot minute. But this is a good place. This was a good hang and uh, that's it. Well check them out. Uh, if you have any other you have any questions for me before we go. Um because no, I've I, started pe asking people this because I yeah I think it's wise to do so. Do, hmm, what's uh, favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate chip cookie dough. Okay. Pretty basic white guy flavor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Private Select. You're good. Private Select has three really good. They have a. Uh, the Kroger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Denali mint moose track. It's super. Oh, it has like little cups and fudge ripples that are like thick and chunky. Uh, the the there's just. Uh, moose track that's like in chocolate fudge flavored yeah, ice yeah. cream, and then my favorite of all time, uh, black raspberry chocolate chunk of the same brand. I think it's black black raspberry. That's a good pick, man. So um, yeah, I just wanted to make that about me. I asked you a question. Yeah, though. cool. <laughs> I'm trying to. Uh, yeah, I am. Man, I need to. Uh, I need to listen to people and and ask about them more. Sometimes I'm very good at it, and I can sit and listen. But a lot. Well, of times I just started I, doing that because I. I, I never considered if people had any questions for me. I know yeah. this is about this is about you. It yeah. really is, and I, I just never, because having a question for me uh, that you want to answer or answered is something that is doing something for you. Because you know, if you want to know, I'll tell you. <sighs> but if you don't have anything, it's, don't no pressure. What percent gay do you think you are? Uh, uh, <laughs> this shirt, it's at least a 10. A 10? No, but I, I, I'd i say, uh, I almost wrote a joke about this, and I'll, well, it, to I quote think every comedian, I'll end with this. I don't think anyone is greater than 99. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody's, nobody's that. I, yeah. I, I, I will say, a guy at a show the other day, he said I look like a little Mark Wahlberg, and for 15 seconds... I was at least 87% gay. Because he gave you a compliment? <laughs> yeah. Dude, you, I, gay, my friend Gabe, he had yeah. a compliment. He goes, gay guys will compliment you about features you didn't know you had. Mm. I was like, oh, man, you, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, right. Yeah. I, I used to hang out with uh, at Blake's because I was dating the door girl at the time. She, she's straight white female. I was straight white male. We just... Our worlds collided in the oddest place, and Blake's was the biggest gay bar in Atlanta before. Apparently, shut down. Mm -hmm. And so this uh, this guy walked up to me. He goes, "Hey, cute shirt!" And he pulled the button like he's flirting with me. Yeah. And I the, what, the straightest <laughs> answer. I go, "Thanks, dude. I got it on sale." <laughs> he goes, "You're straight, aren't you?" I was like, "Yeah, dude." When somebody does that to your shirt, man or woman, it does. It's, there's something. Some having a, your shirt ripple over your abdomen abdomen is <laughs> when they when somebody just grabs it at you like that like, oh you're, shit oh man oh. like you're paying attention yeah you but, got uh, me now you know what else gay men like i've had many they say <laughs> they will uh multiple will say to me uh are you sure you're straight are you sure like and it really <laughs> makes me but i'm i'm actually yeah think about I, it for a second you're like I, yeah, well, yeah i am be. largely straight and, and i'm pretty convicted in that because i've tried and explored not tried to have sex with a man but i have but i've, but I've done <laughs> things to try to figure out whether I could. That's why you started jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That a is. rear naked choke, just yeah. naked. But uh, yeah, I, I would say I'm at least at least thirty percent. Yeah, because I yeah. I mean, two thirds straight's pretty good. I would definitely kiss men. There's a lot of men, <laughs> that I'm, but but I can't. But I watch gay porn, and it's like watching a cartoon. Like it's just absurd. It just looks yeah. so. And that sounds rude <laughs> to, to people who enjoy. Yeah. Like okay. Oh, I, this is my life. Okay, that's great. It's called yucking someone's yums. I think. Don't, don't, <laughs> yucking don't, someone's don't yums. Don't yuck my yums. Don't yuck my yums. Your porn is stupid, like a children's show, a cartoon. Uh, no, it's. But it is. It's just hard for me to take seriously, and I, I don't stay hard. But I do see men. I don't stay hard. But there are you men. Get hard. But I there are. I have sent my. I have sent dick pics to men, and I have. I've spent. <laughs> a little time on grinder when I was lonely and I have uh, and I have uh, what, what was the other um, uh, oh just dude you just sometimes you just have to stare at a Ferg Ferg is a very I'm like sometimes he'll post he had like a photo shoot in like football gear with the, yeah. where his shirt was off and I fucking looked at those photos like a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah but there's where I'm just, I, but I don't know if that could just be admiration and a little bit of, I mean, I'm in decent shape, but like, yeah, like I want to be like that. But it's also I like, that. no, I can't stop looking at this. This yeah. is attractive. I mean, they, they, I mean, you got to give it to yeah, credit. Yeah. It but mean, I wouldn't if, have sex. I can't, I can't do it with them. Gay guys, they're, they're, they're 
pros at attracting men. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's, we, yeah, you know, it's like they're professional men attractors. They know what I want. <laughs> <laughs> they know what I want. They know. They know. But they can't quite get it. Looking at you, Connor. Yeah. Well, I am, at least in this shirt. All right. Connor looks great. Yeah. Connor is great. But yeah, yeah. we're going to end it here, Tim. Uh, yeah. I appreciate it, man. This is a good one. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Uh, jokes are Tim on Instagram. J -O -K -E -S -A -R -E -T -I -M. Jokes are Tim. Jokes are Tim. You got it. <laughs>